Okay, so here's the kit. Comes in a box. I'm not going to do the whole unboxing thing. People that go on onto YouTube to watch somebody else unbox a product is kind of strange for me. But uh, so you got the two cartridges, and they look pretty cool in the end. They've got the adjusters for dampening and uh, and and things like that on it. And they're all you know real shiny aluminum and good steel and everything. And with this kit, it actually came with the tool you need to get down inside the fork and undo on one side to undo a bolt to disassemble them. And we'll see that the two forks are different. One's for dampening, one's for compression. And so these are set up for that as well. And there's a little bit of modification you have to do on the bike um, to on the forks to get out one side. And I'll get into that too. But for now, I got the bike on a stand. You can see I got my new... Uh, skid plate there makes it nice and flat on the bottom so I can set it up on a bench there get the front end off the ground which is always a hard thing to do when you got a bike this heavy uh, so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take off the forks you don't need to see that I'm sure you can watch a video on how to take off a front wheel and and drop your fork tubes out so I'll get back to you as soon as I get that out okay so I have the right leg off and uh, this is gonna be the easier one to do um, Kind of got it mixed up in the directions here, but I got it figured out now. They both have set screws, but this one doesn't need to come out. I should be able to get everything out of the top and then insert the uh, cartridge down in there. But I will go ahead and start taking it apart and get that oil drained out of there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get to pull this piece of plastic back and then get a 14 millimeter wrench onto the screw that's inside there. And then you can take your cap off, which you can release this piece. I'm let my spring come out of here. Okay, here is my right fork tube. Okay, now they don't tell you any directions, and I had to figure it out on my own. Is getting out this bottom screw here is a piece of work. Now you can get in there with just a regular Allen wrench, for example. And, uh, and it will just spin because on the inside here, I don't know if you can see if there's enough light down in there. I'll try to get some light in there. The top of that, oh, I'll give it the head down there. The inside of that, you can see it's kind of a hex. All, no, I'm not talking about the bolt on top, but all the way down inside there. And you have to grab that somehow to be able to turn that screw. Now you can use, as I did, I just basically cut off an Allen wrench because I didn't have one that long, a hex wrench, and it's an 8 millimeter, so it fit into an 8 millimeter screw. So I used my um, I used my impact driver with this and I basically got it loose to start with, but then it was just spinning in there. So I got in there, basically, instead of making a wrench to fit down in there, because I tried, I just got a piece of wood, a nice soft piece of wood, and stuck it down in there, and kind of jammed it in between the, uh, the side of that bolt, tapped it a few times, just to snug it a little bit, just, to, just enough to, so where my impact driver could pull it out, so I got that bolt out of there. So now I've never seen that on any video on how to do that. Um, you can buy that. I'm sure there's a, a wrench, you know, some kind of socket that fits down in there all the way down into the tube to grab that. Or you can try that piece of wood or at least know in advance that you're going to need something like that. That's what I'm sure a guy in the shop would have used. Now I should be able to pull this whole piece out of there. And there it all comes. Okay, so I'm going to lay that on the bench with the other parts here. In no particular order because I'm going to put the other cartridge in there. Notice on the instructions it just says take off the screw from axle clamp like here. Oh yeah, you just 
take it off there. Of course, it doesn't tell you that there you need a wrench for the inside of that to get it loose. And then, you know, slide in your new one. That sounds all so easy. Okay, so you do have a screw that goes in the end of it to secure it back down to the fork leg. This is the uh, original one that came out of there. And the Andriani one, uh, as a replacement, has a different thread. So you can't use the original one. But you can take this uh, little copper ring off of here and put it on here just to uh, seal it when you put that together. So I'm going to go ahead and stick that in there now. So according to the uh, directions, I just slide that in there. Bad points for Adriani. So this tightened in, but it's not torqued. You know what? Okay, so there's the first fork light done. Installed. This is the right one. This is supposed to be the easy one. So now I'm on to the harder one. It's got me warmed up with this one. Haven't added any oil to it yet. So I'll add the oil later after I put them on. But that one's all put together. Now we're going to start on this one by uh, taking this apart. Taking this off of here. So you're going to need either pipe wrench or a 27 millimeter for this back holder nut here to be able to get the cap off. And then a 17. <coughs> Okay, I've got my cap loose there. Set that aside. And this is my backing piece here. Now, you got to get this off of here because then there's this tool that they sent, this magic tool for taking apart this particular fork leg. This comes from the Andriani company. It's kind of cool. You can order it with or without it, but I recommend ordering it with it. I don't think it costs much more. And this is going to fit down inside there. And that's going to allow you to get the, that piece of the cartridge out of there. So let's give it a try. It's going to be a Okay, so I've got it in there. I'm going to put my screwdriver in there because it's got a hole. This is going to let my fork springs out and things like that. If you're changing your fork springs, this is what you're going to need this tool here. I'm changing the whole cartridge. I'm going to go ahead and take it all apart. Rest of that out of there, or that's also if you're going to change your uh, your um, seals, your fork seals, you'll need to be able to do that to get it apart. But I'm going further. I'm going to have to get the whole rest of the innards out of there to be able to put in the other fork cartridge because it attaches differently to the bottom than this one does. So that means I'm going to have to take this little set screw out of there now. Okay, figuring this out was a little bit tough. Of course, I went on 
uh, the internet to try to figure out how other people have done it. But basically, I had to drill this out. I just I tried to get down to where there's an Allen screw in there, but the Allen screw wouldn't work. It got stripped. So I went ahead and just drilled out the Allen screw until I just barely saw the threads of this real carefully. So I got that out. Then stuck it in the vise. Fairly firm here with some stuff around so it wouldn't damage the tube. And then I got the fork leg and I got a pipe in there and I just tapped it. And oh, I forgot, yeah, I had to heat it up first. Heating it up real good all the way around. A couple minutes. Doesn't damage the paint on it or anything. Heat it up real good all the way around. And I tried it first without heating it. It wouldn't, it wouldn't do it. So, yeah, with the... Uh, with the heat and a good tap and now it's coming loose it's still hot so we gotta be careful here apparently the heat of course expands the aluminum and not the metal and makes it easier but also if there's loctite in there it loosens up the loctite as well This uh, little part that was drilled out can easily be retapped, and I'll put another set screw in there. But there it is, nice and clean. See just a little tiny bit of a mark where I uh, where I drilled, just a tap mark. Okay, so now I'm set. Should be able to pull the guts out of this baby and uh, insert the new uh, cartridge. Okay, so once we have this off of here, let it cool down a little bit, and then the instructions say to go inside of here, and there is an O-ring in there, to take out the O-ring and the little washer that goes in there, and then I'm supposed to insert into there this piece right here. I'm going to drop that baby down inside there, Whoop. just like that, and then I put my O-ring in down into the spot in there. It fits in too. Okay, I've got that drop down in there with the O-ring around it. It looks like you can see I've got the cartridge in now, and it's coming all the way down. And it's going to meet to, see the piece in there, it's going to screw right onto there once I put that on there. And then I'll tighten this down. It doesn't seem like it needs anything else. So I'm going to go with that. I'll let you know how it goes. I can see that this piece has to come out. You'd think maybe the cartridge slid through it, but um, in lining up with the cartridge, uh, the cartridge does not fit through that hole. So that means it needs to come out. So both of those plastic pieces come out. So just be prepared once you get that off, you'll see it sitting in there. And you can either try to pull it out this way, which is pretty tough, or you can pound it out the other way. I just basically put in a, a piece of pipe in there about the same size and gently uh, tapped it all the way through until I got that piece out of there. So now I'm ready to put the bottom of my fork leg on, the axle holder. And I'm going to put some Loctite on here. I already cleaned it with some... Uh, some brake cleaner and stuff to make sure I got it clean. And then, well, first, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and retap this and put another screw in there so I can have a, uh, a tightening screw or whatever we call it. So I can have a locking screw that'll help lock this in place and hopefully meet right up with that little tab that's already there. Okay, as you can see there, since I I drilled a smaller hole actually than the original screw that was there right down through the center of it. Took the center out and that allowed me to unscrew it. So then I'm just retapping the original threads to make sure that they're, uh, that they're in good shape. And then I'm going to make another set screw. I'll just drill a little, I'll just grind a little hole in the end of a, I mean a little point in the end of a good hard screw and I'll put it back in there. And then I'll give a little bit of ping, ping on the end of that. And some Loctite to hold it in place. Okay, there's my new set screw. 
pointed it's going to go through there and it's actually going to be so that i can remove it next time because it's going to have a head on it not like the one they jammed inside of there so if i need to rebuild the forks again i'll be ready to go okay got the lock tight putting tons on more than i need just to be safe Last in that batch there. Oops. Oh. Get right back in the same spot again. Or close to it. Going to it. <laughs> going to that spot. <clears throat> okay. Make sure this is going to be in here good and tight. Tighten everything in there. Okay. Now, it's more locked tight. Do it. Click. Okay. That's on there. Okay. I'm gonna put my cartridge in. So this kit is just full of surprises. You know, they give you this tool right here to help you take apart the old one but what they don't tell you is that you need another one for this right here to screw it into the fork leg remember we changed the bolt in the bottom underneath there so this goes down and screws into that but they don't give you a tool for that or even tell you that you need one but what you can do is you take the one that they gave you to undo the other kit Okay, so here's the part that you take off the other shock, and this fits inside of it. It fits inside these little holes here. But this is a different size than this one. So what you can do, I just figured out, is I went to my grinder, and I made these teeth smaller. Just on a bench grinder here, or you can use a grinder, a hand grinder. And now... It fits this. So I can use it for tightening that too. And it hasn't really ruined it. It just made the teeth smaller. They still actually fit the other piece. If I wanted to put the old cartridges back in or I wanted to give somebody else a hand who's uh, wanting to change into Adriani tool, my modified tool on there. in there to 
should be tight enough. And now that I've got that on there, I can actually add my fork oil now. Put that down a little bit farther. On measurements, it says it comes on a little package that holds your uh, holds your manual that comes with it in two different languages, Italian and English. Um, it tells you 110 millimeters, so you're supposed to fill it up as fill it up without the spring or the spacer. That's this part here, spacer spring to 110 millimeters from the top so my uh, tape measure wouldn't fit in there so I just measured out a piece of wire to 110 so I can just go like that and I should be able to dip and see how much oil I put in there of course I don't know where to start what are the likelihood that you're going to overfill it when that's how you're supposed to do it no idea so I'm going to grab my oil and start filling. They recommend only using Olin's oil, so that's why I went out and got Bel Ray. Actually here I couldn't find Olin's oil here. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, five weight is five weight. Maybe Olin's is better, but Bel Ray makes pretty good pork uh, oil. And this is five weight I'm putting in. Okay, so I'm trying to get this up to 110 millimeters, so you have to kind of be able to see down inside there. I cannot see in there for the life of me. Okay, so, so remember to put in this rod for the dampening adjustment. So it doesn't melt on me when I drop it in there. Nope, that's good. Drop my spring in there. Okay, so now I'm gonna. It's a little tricky. You have to hold this. Put a finger in there, and then put that on so this doesn't drop down, and then just get that set on there lightly. Then you can ah, put like a 10 millimeter in there to hold that down. And then on top they make it a 20, you need a 25 millimeter socket fit on the top of this. But yeah, or uh, for doing this we're going to need two 17s. Oops, there's one 17. Oh my goodness. Okay, got two 17s. So one's going to go on this, not here. One's going to go up here. We're going to tighten this down to that set screw on there. about right. Now that's set on there. Pull that out of there. Set that back up in there. Now, let me just take that back down in there. Oh, got this coil everywhere. And this is where I'm going to need my 25 millimeter for the top. Oh, 
Oh, goodness gracious. I'll be easier to tighten it down once I get in the, to the uh, triple clamps. Okay, so. This one is done. And we'll have to just set that into the bike for right now. So we're just going to slide this back up in there for now. hand tight so I can put it back on the bike and uh, torque that and adjust my uh, spring tension and my dampening. Okay. Slide that lady back up in there. Can just kind of put some light torque on here, get my wheels on there, and everything, and then I can start and on this side, though. Good, enough to be that tight. Okay, got this top snug down now, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and read the manual about the minimum adjusting. Uh, for the preload and things like that, and then we'll try it again. Okay, so the instructions say for adjusting it, it says go completely closed on the compression and then two turns. So I got this closed all the way. Okay, so then I'm going to go two turns. One, two. This is just a starting point, but we'll see. Okay, and then on the uh, preload, it says four turns from fully open to closed. So, let's mark that with pen so I can see where I'm going. Four turns. One, two, three, four. Okay, we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay, I got them adjusted. Right to where they say on the preload and the dampener. Compression. So, Take, have to take it for a road ride and see what it's like. Before it was bottoming out really badly and having a lot of trouble with it. So, okay. So, next video will be being on the Olin shock in the back. It's on order, should be in this week. And uh, then we'll have to go for a ride and check it out, see if it really is better than it was before. 